Hello, Don Quixote again. This week we have discussed three topics at culturelovers.eu. 1. Our requirements for a camper. 2. Our draft bucket list of festivals for Spain. And 3. The themes that we could cover driving to the north of Spain. Okay, let me start with the first topic, the requirements for our camper. As you may or may not know, we are considering buying a camper for our travels. Choosing a camper sounds easy, but it actually isn't. You need to understand what your needs are going to be, and that is not that trivial. So, to get a feel what it means to live in a camper, we watched a whole lot of videos about campers and camper life on YouTube. From these videos two things become very obvious to us. 1. We do not have the time or skills to convert a van, and 2. Buying a camper comes down to making many compromises. The art is to identify the sweet spot that best suits our needs. So, we had to start with identifying our needs. After many videos we think that we have a good list. The camper will need To have space for two To have two meter beds with easy access for both to have an internal height of at least 195 centimeters. To have a small kitchen, shower and toilet. To allow for a payload of at least 500 kilos. To be insulated. To have proper off-grid support, which means for us, solar panels, sufficient lithium batteries, and good internet connectivity. Not to be too long and too wide. To be able to drive with a regular driver's license. And to be of a brand that has a good support network. We consider that this list is a good basis to evaluate the options in the market. By the way, if you have suggestions for us, feel free to let us know. On the second topic. That is the draft bucket list of Spanish festivals. We have done quite a bit of research. In the present state, our list of festivals is longer than we can handle in one year. Let's see what we can accomplish on our first trip. The list has currently the following festivals. 1. The Semana Santa in Zamora, the most historic Semana Santa. 2. Las Falas in Valencia, the fireworks festival. 3. The Romeria in El Rocío, the biggest pilgrimage festival in Spain. For it, the Carnival of Cadiz, one of the finest carnivals you can find in Spain. 5. The Tamborada in San Sebastian, a battle of the drums between soldiers, cooks and maids. 6. The Battle of Del Vino in Harrow, the famous wine battle. 7. The Romeria de Santa Marta de Ribartim, a procession with near-death survivors in open caskets. 8. El Colacho in Castrillo de Murcia also known as the Baby Jumping Festival. 9. The Tomatina in Bunal, the well-known tomato battle. 10. The Feists de la Merce in Barcelona, with parades, drum battles, and human towers. 11. The Fiesta de San Fermin in Pamplona, with bulls running through the streets. 12. The Moros y Cristianos in Alcoy, a festivity to celebrate the battles of the Reconquista. And 13. The Feria de Mayo in Córdoba, or the Córdoba Spring Fair. Feel free to do suggestions on what we should add to this list. We're here to learn about the identity of Spain as part of the identity of Europe. On the last topic for today, that is about the themes we could cover driving to Spain. We haven't spent too much time on this, but let me share what we have done so far. The idea is now that we at least have some stopovers. One, at Tangerin, to see the statue of Ambiorix, the king of the Eburonan that died fighting the troops of Julius Caesar. Two, at Rouen, to learn more about the life of Joan of Arc. Three, at the landing zones in Normandy, to get a better grasp of D-Day. Four, at the Font of Raud Abbey, to discover the story of Eleanor of Aquitaine, who served as Queen of France and Queen of England in the 12th century. These stops, or the themes related to them, will give us a better sense of the historical context that shaped Europe's identity. 
Okay, that was my contribution for this week. Next week I hope to be back with more updates from culturelovers.eu. If you are interested, do not forget to subscribe. See you.